Welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by GraphicDesignerTips.com. My name is Steve, and today what we're going to be speaking about is typography. Uh, we're going to do a couple different things uh, with the characters and uh, even some of the paragraph options. Uh, just to show you guys what kind of uh, you know options there are um, for when you are making your layout. So um, just understanding the basics of it will give you uh, more ideas of how to uh, you know. Um, be a little bit creative when you're doing your designs, change things up a little bit, uh, emphasize things a little bit more. So uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I uh, created this graphic on the screen, um, but I'm not going to be working with this graphic. I'm going to be shifting this up a little bit, and we're going to uh, first, I'm going to shift this up, and I'm going to come over here to our type tool. Now you can either go over here and click this, or you can hit the letter T for type, on your keyboard and it's going to uh, give you this little cursor and you could either do two things with this uh, you could either just click and then start clicking in here and the way that you um, select off this box you could either come up to here this selection tool and it'll create a selection like that or when you're typing in there you can hit the escape button and it'll also do that I find hitting the escape button a lot quicker than coming all the way up here and clicking uh, I try to click as least as possible. Um, obviously, we're always clicking and moving things, but um, keyboard commands and uh, and stuff like that is going to make make you breeze through these layouts a lot quicker. So, um, let's come back here to this, and I'm going to delete this real quick. Uh, that was the first way of making a text uh, a text element uh, by either clicking. Or the second way you can do it is by clicking and holding, so dragging a box. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually dragging a box, and this box is going to be the dimensions for the type that's going to go inside of it. So if I let go of this, you're going to see the cursor start to go. And obviously this is huge, this is 45 points. So I'm going to bring this down to about 14 points. And I'm going to write test copy with a space after it. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to select all, copy, and I'm going to start pasting in there. And you're going to see exactly what's happening. So, uh, very, very self explanatory. Um, but the, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and um, I use something in my layouts called uh, dummy text. Uh, I use it all the time uh, because it looks realistic. But all it's really doing is it's filling in an area so I can kind of get an idea of. Um, you know, either how much type, like for instance, if I have a client and I'm doing a layout for them, I might ask them for two paragraphs uh, worth of type, and I do that based on the fact and based on the fact that I know how much room is in a specific part of the layout. I'm going to use that type, and they might take a couple of days to send me this this uh, copy. So in the meantime, I'm making my layout, and I need to use some kind of copy. I mean, I could take a paragraph or an email I've written, you know, of that sort, but. For as a designer, uh, you should learn about uh, lorem ipsum, uh, which is uh, it's a, a Latin, uh, like a 16th century Latin language um, that was all jumbled up, and uh, it's made it's it's used in uh, it's in in this industry a lot uh, in the newspaper and marketing industry uh, for dummy text, placeholder text. So uh, I'm going to create a text. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to come to. This website, it's lipsum.com, L-I-P-S-U-M, and we're going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to grab some of this right here. It makes absolutely no sense to me, uh, and if you read it too, it's going to make absolutely no sense. So um, we're going to create a text box, not there, we're going to create a text box, and we're going to put this type inside of it and I'm gonna pull the character palette out now if you don't have your character palette out you can go to window and you can go up to type down to type and character so or you can hit command or control and then the letter T so the letter T gets you to the type tool and then control T will get you to the type uh, palette so now we have our type palette open and if we highlight all this text we can see on the first line it's times uh, new Roman and it's regular so we can either a change the font through here so uh, a font that everybody has on their computer um, most people I would say uh, we'd be Arial or Helvetica so we'll do Arial right now and we're going to make this regular but you can also do italics you could do bold bold italic uh, each font has a different set of, of values to it so like I like to use myriad which is which is uh, very close to 
Arial. And Myriad Pro has all these extra ones, bold condensed, uh, light condensed, uh, if you want some kind of an effect like that. So um, changing the effects and the, you know, the way type looks can have a huge impact on the feel of the piece. So like if you're making a, a flyer for a party, uh, you want to be making nice big, uh, you know, fat in your face kind of fonts. Uh, but where they're reading about the party, you might want to make it a little bit simpler. So, uh, and what I meant about the big fat fonts, uh, you know, more for like headers and stuff that you really want to stand out. So, um, I want to show you that uh, there's a couple tools in here. And the first one, this is going to be the set the font size. So, you can either go up or down. And as whatever you have highlighted is going to change depending on, like I said, what you have highlighted. Uh, this tool over here, it sets what's called the leading. So um, to make this look a little bit more cleaner, I'm going to make sure this is regular. And I am going to keep this a 10 point. And right here, if you hover over that, it's this is how you set the leading. And leading is uh, the amount of space after each line. So right now it's at 12. What I learned in college was if you're using 10 point type, use 12 point lighting. If you're using 15 point type, use 17 point lighting. Always go two above the, the type size on your lighting. So your lighting always has to be two numbers higher. Um, that's a standard. So uh, you see as I start to get to 10, you see how I start uh, if I have 10 and 10, it gets all squished. So obviously that's not what you want. You want everything to look really clean. So uh, let's go up to here to 12. Uh, in some cases, uh, and I'll show you in flyers that I've designed, uh, or in pieces I've designed for clients of mine, that if I need to fill an area, um, it just looks so bare, but I don't have enough copy from the client and they don't want any more copy in there than, than what we have. Um, you know, the first thought in your head might be like, oh, let's go like this, you know, kind of like we did on our, on our term papers back in high school. Um, you know, edit the line spacing a little bit so it looks it looks like you wrote more than you actually did. Uh, but we're not going to do that in this case. Um, we're going to increase the leading to fill that area. And this is a good tool. I mean, you can look through any magazine and see paragraphs like this. Not where you're reading for two or three minutes, but you're reading uh, about a 30-second paragraph of worth of information, you know, uh, 200 words or under. So, uh, I mean, you can go a little bit more, but um, it just gives a nicer effect. It spaces things out. Uh, the next thing under here is, this is kerning. Now, kerning is the space between two characters. So, if I have this whole thing selected and I start to move my kerning, it's going to give me an error message. Boom. It's telling me that it can only be set between characters, basically. So, if I see this O and the R on, on the word lorem is kind of far away, I will lower this kerning right here. And the kerning is actually going to pull everything else from the right to the left. It's shrinking the area between the letters. So you can also do that by holding, I believe, Command and, uh, hold on a second, it's actually, it's an option. It's Option and either going left and right and on my, uh, on my preferences, I guess, it's set to go to 2.25 uh, two two each time. So it's jumping a lot as opposed to if I just click it once at a time. So let me hit Escape because if you try to do anything, uh, you know, you start to type any any letters. If you think you're typing a letter, try to get to a tool, a shortcut. It's actually going to type within your document. So hit escape or come up here and do the selection just to get out of that text box. You're no longer editing it. All right. Now, the next thing over here is this is tracking. Now, what tracking is going to do for you is tracking is going to take the whole block and move it and stretch it out basically and add space after each letter. The kerning is between two letters, tracking is between the whole document. So um, the next thing I'm going to show you is there are a couple more options. Uh, I don't use them too much, but it's good to show you them so you understand what's going on with them. Um, over here, uh, um, down here is horizontal scale. Now I will tell you one thing. I can look at any piece of artwork and tell you if or any heading or anything to tell you if, if anything was stretched. Photos, typography, I can't stand doing that. I worked at an ad agency at one time and I used to produce uh, uh, retail flyers and, uh, and one of the clients we had was, uh, was a car company and uh, we had to get these flyers out every single night. So if they had a flyer that was eight and a half, 11, and all of a sudden we needed to change that flyer to be three and a half, uh, you know, three and a half by eight and a half, we had to squeeze all that information in there. We had to start doing some funky stuff. We had to start taking headings. Uh, we had, you know, hold on one second, let me make a heading. 
and we had to start stretching them and you know stretching them this way and pulling them this way and I was getting sick of it because that's uh, that's not true design it's just kind of um, it's kind of like a bad fix to squeeze something in there and it looks messy it looks unprofessional uh, you're not gonna open up a magazine any professional looking magazine and you're gonna see stuff stretched you're just not gonna see it so um, unless stuff is arced and stuff like that that's a little bit different when you have effects on it but um, in this case if you start to stretch things, you're going to see it right here. The horizontal scale is going to go up. So if you start messing around and you're like, oh, man, I don't know what I did and it looks like that now, just come over here and hit this down arrow and go to 100% and you're going to get your original proportions back. So uh, that's on that. Um, I don't really use these two. These are set in the baseline shift. Vertical, vertical scale. Uh, vertical scale is cool if you can't if you can't figure out the bullet button. So like if I make a period right here, I can highlight that period and I can lift that baby. Oh man, I'm doing the wrong one. Excuse me. Uh, that's my baseline shift. All right, I just got out of work. So uh, right here. So baseline shift can lift bullets up or any other type if you want maybe the S a little bit higher than everything else. I do use this. The one I actually don't use is the uh, vertical scale. So um, over here, let's see what else we got. I got a couple more minutes on this. Um, in Illustrator, you can do, hold on. In Illustrator, you can do effects. Uh, you can come up to effect and go to warp. Uh, while you have the type selected, arc uh, is like the is the is the first one on the list. So if you hit preview, you can do all types of stuff with that. So you know, play around with that and see what you get. Uh, I tend to stay away from warping anything. Um, what you can actually do is, um, if I created like a circle here, all right, and you come to your type. Now there's another number of different type options in here. You could type in an area, you could type on a path. Let's type on a path right now. Uh, you're gonna click the path and you're gonna type the word headings. I don't know, I'm just using the word headings. Hit escape to, to stop that. And you're going to come over to your direct selection, click that circle, and pull one of these points. Sometimes you gotta to try to play around to see which one uh, you really need. And that point is gonna shift it around the whole piece. Now, if you take this point and you go straight down with the arrow, and hold on, let me just, it flips it in. Am I in the wrong arrow? It flips it over to the other side. All right, right here. So if you take the one that was on the opposite corner and you just start pulling around and messing with it, it's going to give you effect an effect like this. So, um, you know, just different kind of options you could do with typography. Like I said, I don't do much of it. I stay towards standard stuff. I like to uh, make sure my type isn't stretched. Um, proper line spacing is very important. I'm going to set that back to zero. You see what I just did with the headings just to, uh, you know, make it look a lot nicer. And um, the last thing is, I'm not going to really go into paragraph stuff, but uh, you know, usually with your character palette, uh, it's attached to your paragraph palette. So this is where you can do your center, your right, justified, uh, your right, um, your uh, left aligned, justified, all the types of stuff. So um, you'll see this one in newspapers a lot. That's why you see random spacing in. in in front of a lot of words so but that's for another time that's for another tutorial and um, that's really it on type uh, I mean there's a there's more options stuff like that but that's the basics on type um, type is actually uh, read as a font so if you want to put color in a type you're going to have to create outlines on it and you're gonna to have to go to type and create outlines and then you can do I mean you can put color in there beforehand when it's not outlined but if you want to do gradients and which I've shown in another tutorial, I uh, could do it like so. So you could do a gradient on that. You throw a stroke. All right. And then you throw a stroke, and then you apply a shadow. And I'm just messing around with some things. So that is typography 101, sorta. So uh, guys, Steve, GraphicDesignerTips.com. Leave us some comments. Um, you know, suggestions on, on new tutorials. I'm up for anything. So have a good night. Thanks for watching. Peace.